The following is a presentation of the HAN Network, the leader for local news, sports, and entertainment in Fairfield and Westchester counties. Good afternoon, everyone, live from the Terry Connors Rink in Stanford. It's the FCAC Boys Hockey Quarterfinal Playdowns on the HAN Network, along with Chris Kalen and Frank Renito and our entire HAN Network crew. I'm Rob Adams. Happy to have you along as the number five New Canaan Rams take on the four seed, the Ridgefield Tigers. Looking forward to this one. Do not be fooled. Those are not the Chicago Blackhawks, but Doggone it, they're pretty darn good looking uniforms anyway as we join you for game two of our triple header. Chris Callen joins me up here in the booth. Frank down at ice side and again, we look forward to this one. And you know, the Rams have been a team that have been very tough to figure out. A real up and down roller coaster all season, Cato. When we saw them earlier in the year at one point, they played as bad a New Canaan game as I've ever seen against Darien, getting whacked to the tune of 8-1. to one. But since then, they've kind of put things together, and again, an up-and-down season. And for the most part for New Canaan, you knew it was going to be a down year. They had a lot of players on the up-and-coming. The talent level just hasn't been what it's been over the past few years. But for the most part, they always come to play. And for them, it's just a battle of which New Canaan... It almost seems like which New Canaan team is going to show up but for the last few weeks, it's definitely been the better team showing and playing. As we get ready to meet the starting lineups, let's go across to Frank Granito. Frank. Well, that's the beauty of the FCAC in high school hockey here. All you have to do is get in, and then it's anyone's game. I agree that we've seen an up-and-down Rams team, and they have sort of come into their own. They mixed and matched their lines a little bit. They're very confident with what they have going now. You'll see the line of Granito, Gamble, and Gelnaw starting for them today up front with Francis and Hood on the defense and Windus will be in goal. But for the Rams, it's how do you weather that first storm? You've got a lot of young guys. How do you sort of work your way into this game without getting smacked across the fake by a good Richfield Tiger team who they split the season series with? We have already met the Rams. Let's meet the Richfield Tigers. With all that, you've met the starting lineups. We need to toss the puck and get it going. We'll do it right after this. You're watching the FCAC on the HAN Network. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. The HAN Network travels all over Fairfield County in our HAN Cruiser covering news, sports, and entertainment. And when we do, we make sure that our HAN Network branded floor mats are with us to keep the dust and dirt outside. These mats get filthy, and there's only one company that can get rid of that kind of dirt. Triple S, with locations all over Fairfield County, we're just now pulling into their Stanford facility. Rob, let's go see if Steve and Wanda can clean these mats up. Wanda, Steve, literally thousands of feet have walked across our mats in the last five months in wind, rain, mud, more. Is there any way you can make these mats look like new again? No problem. That's what we do here. Come on in. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall -wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at triplesclean.com or 203-847-8000. 
You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Ready for game number two with the Ridgefield Tigers down to our right and the New Canaan Rams down to our left. Frank, I know you know a thing or two about this team. What a great look for the Rams. These might be the best Rams jerseys I've seen in the 10 years now that I've known New Canaan hockey. Just a very crisp look. They're designed off the Blackhawks Winter Classic jersey. The name on the back looks good on it. <laughs> and there's no ponytails blocking the names or the numbers. So Rob should be okay. Yeah, I was not no com complaints from complaining. Rob today. <laughs> I was not complaining about the ponytails. I mean, you know, Troy Palomalu could be playing out there. It's fine. For the record, I did not say complaining. I said Rob had a difficult time. And Rob, as great as the New Canaan jerseys are, I'm a huge fan of the Richfield jerseys as well. I am but too. just it's, it's what we love. Yeah, no, these are these are great. Tigers on the front with a paw print. Number on the front in the right upper right corner up near the shoulder. On the back as well with a drop shadow, but not an obtrusive watch drop shadow. It's a nice one. But on the other side, and clear as a bell, there's that last name, Granito. Seen far too much of that all day today. On <laughs> to game number two, we go with New Canaan heading from left to right, and Ridgefield will do the opposite. We are all set to get underway. Trying to get Rockus here. And away we go in game number two. First time we have seen the Tigers this year. That should get Pontoof the Cat to uh, be kind of happy. Off into the left corner it goes, held in left point. Francis blasts it on net, and the save made by Sean Keegans, the junior netminder for Sean Gallagher, the head coach, as it goes behind the net. Back to play at Mateo Van Wees. Off into the right corner for the Rams now, looking to play it back, bouncing off the boards, held in by Hood at the right point. Teddy Hood on defense for Pat Gore and the New Canaan Rams. No score, 32 seconds gone by through traffic. Stick save by Keegans. Off into the left corner now. On to play it is George McMahon. To the, to the far side boards, Francis, the slap shot, got deflected. Try it again as he works it into the left circle. Fed across to the near side. Here's Drew Morris with the backhander out on net and chipped up into the netting to stop us. 52 seconds gone by and no score. Rob, we're 52 seconds into this game. Three shots on goal already for the New Canaan Rams. The pressure coming early and often. Good saves by Keegan's to start in the game. A lot of low shots hard. He's done a good job of kicking it out and controlling his rebounds. Tyler Ferraro on for the faceoff for New Canaan. Again, modeled after the Chicago Blackhawks Winter Classic jerseys. Those are beautiful sweaters. Brought across and down the left side. It'll go into the corner. That was Jack Stafford, the junior for Ridgefield. Held in at the right point. And it goes on and they score! Just tipped in, Richfield grabs a 1-0 lead. And that's an unbelievable shot from the point. It comes in, a little deflection, it comes down, it's right across the ice, deflects up. Windis goes down to block it, thinking it's coming at the five hole, and it's that last second kick that goes in. Just 106 gone, and it's a 1-0 game. Back out for the draw. Pete Sarathon for the draw for Ridgefield. Lifted right up and across the New Canaan line. Pete Sarath gets the goal. Sound like Cullinan got an assist. And I missed the other assist, I'll be honest. It was Harrison Chuma. There we Rob. go. Schumann and Chuma and Cullinan for the assist, Sarath the goal. And one nothing, just like that, as this will hit the netting. With 1.45 gone in the first period, one nothing Ridgefield. And that's gotta be frustrating for the Rams, Kato. You had a great first shift. That's how they wanted to come out of the gate here, especially with a younger line, including a sophomore Gamble, freshman Granito out there. You get pressure on the attack. Funny bounce goes the other way, and you're down one nothing just a minute then. Face off to the left side of Pete Windis. Peter Windis down 1-0 with New Canaan trailing here early on. This will bounce all the way down for an icing. 
Game two and some new faces on the crew now. Dave Stewart still up here just because he's Dave Stewart. David Teagarden, Marty Hersom, Josh Fisher, JB Cousins, Bill Bloxham, Eric Gendron now directing, and AJ Simonowski standing to my left, rocking and rolling the camera. Instead of your right. He was on my right before, he was closer to you, which I thought was a problem. Worked it back out to neutral zone ice and down the right wing side it goes. McMahon for New Canaan will play it, he'll leave it behind. Hill comes on, out in front, spinning around goes Ferraro. Ferraro out of the right corner, penalty coming. Back behind the net, one timer blasted just wide. It's gonna be a Ridgefield penalty looking for the touch, there it is, with 12.44 to go in the first. And it's gonna be hooking. And it looks like the penalty is gonna be on Jimmy Wilkinson. So that will come at 2.16. And Cato, I don't know if you've seen this so far, but through the two shifts the Rams have had pressure, they have had guys open in the slots and have gotten a couple passes through, just unable to get a strong shot from there so far. It looks like some of those passes have come into that slot high. Down to the near side in a one nothing game. Right point, Francis. Blasted wide. Comes back behind the net. Setting it up out in front. Snagged there by Van Wees. He's able to clear the zone. one nothing. 22 gone on the man advantage. Back out to neutral zone ice. Working it through. McMahon gets on the net but leaves it behind the cage. Off to the near side. Along the right boards. Franz has almost kept it in. However, the high stick will be called. That had to be an infraction, and the yeah. faceoff will come down into the New Canaan end. Yeah, it's just the infraction. It's, and you look at it, the high stick comes down. Morris tries to collect the puck and send it back into the zone. And, well, what are you going to do? I mean, it was. The official goes down. It's a great save by, uh, by Franzen trying to get the, trying to keep the puck in the zone, goes up high to get that, but unfortunately can't get that stick up there. The official had something on his skate. He pulled it off and worked it right back out in front. Another try shorthanded and a couple of whacks at it. Puck right there and finally covered, but not good enough. So Windis unable to collect it with his glove. Back comes Hart and the Rams and spun right back out of the zone. Hayes will go cross ice for the Rams. One nothing and 55 remaining on the power play. Off into the right corner it goes, 11.35 remaining in the first period. And that was great pressure, shorthanded pressure by Ridgefield on that faceoff. Off to the near side, trying to set something out in front was Gelnaw. Held in at the left point, working it down to the left boards. Waiting there, Gunnar Granito. Granito gets it back in the left circle. Pushes it behind the cage to Gelnaw. Gelnaw takes it in the near corner. Just tried to throw it across with a centering pass. Gelnaw again sends wide. Hart will go behind the net. Ryan Hart for the Rams. 1-0 and 17 remaining on the power play. And Keegans will hold on. And a good job by the Rams so far. Coming out with an aggressive mentality. Trying to get as many pucks as they can towards the net when they're in the zone. They're not forcing things from the side on the, on the power play here. But they're doing a good job of working it towards the net. Face off to the right side now of Keegans. Ferraro for the faceoff for the Rams against Will Peters for the Tigers. Down to 10 to go on the power play and stopped again. Keegan's another save. 10.52 remaining in the first. Ferraro and Peters for the draw. And the faceoff won by the Rams. Held in left point. Through traffic, Keegan's a save. Another try, and he'll cover with the glove. Power play will expire after the next faceoff. 10.45 to go. First period, still 1-0. Excellent work by New Canaan. They had three shots on goal in that power play. Good pressure. Other than that one faceoff over there, it was, an excellent, it was an excellent power play for them. Off the draw, power play expires. Out comes Priscilla for the Tigers. And it's still 1-0. Back out to the neutral zone. This will trickle down and be an icing. Athlete of the Week nominee from Greenwich High School, Nick Bizzuto, stopped up and said hello between games. He is here today. There's a lot of Greenwich Cardinals here looking, uh, checking this out. Greenwich, of course, the top seed in this tournament. Darien, the two seed. They both get buys. 
So they get to advance to the next round, which we will see coming up on Wednesday night. Out into the neutral zone it goes, down the left wing. It'll go behind the net, 10.22 remaining. FC Act Championship one week from today as this goes just wide. And that one week from today, the game would be about 15 minutes old. Scheduled for 3 o'clock, one week from this moment. Along the left wing, this will get lifted up over the net by Van Wees in a 1-0 game. Tigers on top, on the goal by Pete Sereth at 1.06. Back down into the Tiger zone. Now into the Ram zone, Pickering back to play it. 1-0 our score. Down at the other end. Lifted back out by Ben Welsh. Across the line, Welsh, and the kick save made by Windus. Windus and Liam Mooney, both netminders for New Canaan. In the neutral zone, kicking it along those far boards, right in front of the New Canaan bench. Puck left behind. Over to the near side it comes. Here's Wilkinson. Wilkinson chasing into the left circle. Tangled up with Ben Webster. And a hard hit off in that left corner as the two fives stay collided. Now they break that up. Off to the near side it comes and lifted back out of the zone, down the right side. Could be icing, won't be icing. Stopping back behind the net, they'll bring it out to the neutral zone, hitting, picking up, as Gamel comes over and delivers a shot on Cullinan, and the puck hits the netting with 8.44 to go in the first period, one nothing Ridgefield. This is a very intense game, Rob. Frank, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, we've seen the physical play pick up the last three minutes, especially in the Ram zone there. A lot of bodies hitting against the boards there, and we've seen a little extra shoving afterwards when players are on the ice so far. Back out to the neutral zone, spun around and sent back by Cullinan. Off to the right side, kept in at the right point, now turned back by the Tigers and backhanded across by Harrison Chuma. 8.22 to go, first period, 1-0 Ridgefield, almost a bad turnover and out to center. Kicked away by Cullinan and taken back by the Tigers, now the Rams will grab it with Granito, it hits the roof and that stops things with 8.12 to go in the period. Granito tried to clear that puck, got a little too much lift on it. Earlier today in basketball, FCAC playoffs going on. And West Hill advance beating Stamford as we anticipate other scores coming throughout the day. Ferraro off the face off, lifts it down. It'll go off to the side of Keegan's in a one nothing game with eight minutes remaining in the first as the puck was out in front. Now the Tigers will start back from right to left. Turned right back around and across the line. Left in the neutral zone off to the near side and down the left wing it goes. Back to collect it is James Francis for New Canaan. Back out to center it goes. And a little bit of buzz in the building but still not great crowds here today as Windus is going to cover up and a sliding Jeff Priscilla comes into the netminder. Third game later on St. Joseph and the Fairfield Co-op. And you're seeing a lot of up and down hockey. Both teams clearing the puck, going deep. It's a lot of neutral zone play. No real sustained offensive pressure from any side, from either side. Well, you've got bigger players at the defense for both teams here. So you'll see the forwards try to chip it past them and use their speed to their advantage. Not allow the defenseman to play the physical style they'd like in the corners. Left by Wilkinson. Webster at the right point. A much more physical game. Obviously the girls are not allowed to play a physical style, even though there was there were hints of physical play in that game, but this definitely has an edge to it as it's trapped by Keegan's with 7.07 to go in the first. When you're looking at it, there are a lot of hard hits, clean hits. I agree. That was a good job by Keegan's there, hugging his post. That puck took a funny bounce off one of his defenseman's pant legs and almost slipped in on the side there. Make sure to follow Mike Suppy today for all you need on State Open Wrestling. As an icing stops things here, Mike is great. You can follow him at Mike's, Mike underscore Suppy underscore H-A-N. I almost didn't recognize him last night. 
Mike walked into Fairfield Ludlow, a, uh, a cleanly shorn man. Hair a little shorter. Uh, well, I wasn't sure who it was. This went right down to Keegan's. Mike's a good guy. Always glad to have him around. Face off to the right side of Keegan's in a 1-0 game. Into the left corner it goes. Played along that far side and out of the rink with 6.47 to go in the first period. A lot of stops here. Yeah, a lot of deflection there. That puck almost went into the concession stand. But you're seeing a lot of it. They're going, they're getting after it. Everybody's trying to clear the puck. They're not, you don't see, you know, and it's like Frank said, it's get around, trying to get around those defensemen and beat them down the ice. Mm, concession stand french fries. Face off oh, to I the right. I bet you could smell them from here, too. <laughs> Always a good option. Back behind the net, into the right corner, Brooks Gamel for New Canaan. one nothing on the goal at 106 of the first period. Back come the Tigers in a three-on-one. Sarath lifts it over the net, Cullinan. Off to the right boards it goes, Gamel. Gamel takes a look to his right. Big opportunity for the Tigers, comes up empty but they keep it alive with Sarath. He had the goal at 106. Goes behind the cage, over to play it is Hayes. Hayes for the Rams. Quinn Hayes gets it back out to center. Knocked down by Granito, he goes for a change. 6.07 to go in the first. Back the other way come the Tigers. Spun around with Jeff Priscilla. Across the line with Mateo Van Wees. Into the right circle, now to the slot. Backhander and thinking about a one-timer was Will Peters. Goes behind the net, Peters will collect it back there. Off into the right corner with Van Wees. Held in at the right point. Pushed down on net, Windis the save to the right corner. 5.43 to go, first period, one nothing to score. Van Wees lost the handle on it, and it'll be blasted around to the near side, although not quite the blast as initially intended. Out of the left corner, Ferraro. Now back to grab it goes Priscilla in the right corner. Boy, did he knock Quinn Hayes aside. A little get out of my way and worked across to the near side. Now thrown right back by Van Wees out of the left circle. Goes behind the net, looking to set it up out in front. Now in the high slot, through traffic and deflected off to the side. Liam Galloway, the sophomore defenseman on. Right point and held in a stick on the ice. Goes behind the net. And Rob, that's Windus' stick on the ice. He's got one of his defensemen right there. As they score to make it 2 nothing. It was Shane Pickering who gave his stick to win this after he lost it to the corner and that puck slipped in through the five hole, I believe. It's that disadvantage, you're having that defenseman stick as opposed to that big stick you have as a goaltender. Absolutely. And it's hard to stop that puck. So two nothing on the goal. Off the face off. Priscilla at 9.56, it's 2 nothing. Back, back out to the neutral zone, go ahead Frank. I was gonna say Cato, similar to what we saw in that girls game, the new Canaan wingers on that last shift, struggle getting the puck out of the zone, allowed Richfield to sustain the four check and that's what led to the goal. I mean, you're seeing it here again. Francis far side, Jack McGeary for the Tigers, now taken back by the Rams. In their own zone and across the line comes Sarah. Sarath got taken down. Working it over to the near side, 2-0, 4.17 to go in the second period, and an icing coming here with 4.14 to go in the first. Richfield screening, they wanted a trip. Here's the replay, Cato. And there it is, you have, the, you have the defenseman stick, you have a regular player's stick, you're not gonna stop the puck on a hard shot like that. And you see it, there's just not enough wood to protect down there along that five hole. Off the face off, it's thrown into the right corner. Now back comes Chuma to play it for Ridgefield. Out come the Rams. Gamel leads it across, across the line for Granito. Into the right circle. Down along at the hash marks. Bouncing back behind the cage to the far side boards. Jack Stafford over there for the Tigers. 3.49 to go, first period, and it's a two nothing game. Off at the near point. Now it goes toward the right corner. Gelnaw trying to set it up out in front for Granito. 
to the hash marks along the left wing side for Jack Stafford. Stafford behind the net, lifts it, and it comes off to the near side. Ben Webster over there for the Rams as well. Trying to keep it in at the right point, unable to do so. Morris will go back into his own end. Drew Morris sends it down the left wing. Back behind the net, Andrew Tagurtha, the, the junior defenseman, comes along. Stop me if you've heard this one before. There's a Marciano on the ice for New Canaan. This is Andrew, wearing 24. Lifted back out to center. On comes Peters. Peters across and sends down into the right corner. Two minutes to 2.59, rather, remaining in the first period. Threaded back to center, but not quite there as it spun right back around by Ty Fujitani. Across the line now, into the left circle. Off to the far side boards. Over there is Will Peters. To the near side with 2.42 remaining in the first period. Marciano, back to center. On came Hart, and it bounced right back to Mateo Van Wies. He's in a one on three in the right circle, and he hit the crossbar! Out of the left corner. Windis was beaten. To the far side, hitting, picking up on net. Held on to by Windis. 2.21 to go in the first, two nothing Ridgefield. Oh, that play started, as you said, Rob. Ryan Hart coming right onto the ice, had an opportunity to take the puck, throw it back in deep, missed it. A great job cutting back there, and that shot off the elbow, a, a centimeter from being barred down. To the far boards, out of the zone, down the left wing it goes. On the play is Chuma. Chuma in the left corner, 2.12 to go first period. Out of that left corner, back behind the net. Very physical first period of play. Held in at the left point, Francis. This will get chipped into the netting with 2.02 to go in the period. And you saw the hustle, and you see the hustle for New Canaan by, uh, by Brooks Gamble. He gets down there, prevents the icing, and really just applies the pressure with some big hits. And, re and really works to try to wait and hold on to the puck until everybody else gets back into the offensive Chase, zone. Chase Glover on for New Canyon for the draw as it comes over to the near side and out of the zone. Goes down the left wing with danger. Down to Kyle Horsa and pushed off to the side of the cage. Now into the right corner, 147 to go in the period. Francis just flailing at it on that far side. Ryan Hart over there as well. But along comes Wilkinson and trying to blast it but deflected into the left corner, 135 remaining in the first. Francis covered with snow off to the far side, Ryan Hart trying to lift it back out is Glover. In a two nothing game, Francis through the neutral zone. Francis in a one on everything as he goes behind the net, off to the right corner. Now right circle trying to thread the needle but nobody home and turned right back by the Tigers. They'll bring it back with Jack McGearian across the line. Down to 110 to go in the first period, 2-0. Ridgefield on top. Webster now fed across, pushed off just to the side. That was Cullinan. Back it comes, and now out of the zone. Trying to work it ahead to Gamble, and down it goes on Keegan. That puck just a hair too long. Absolutely, Rob. And you see it. Gamble tried to get on top of it. That thing just kept bouncing away from him. It seemed like the harder he skated, the faster that puck went. Gelnoff for the faceoff. Peters for Ridgefield to join him. Initially covered by the Tigers. Now put right back on net and another try coming up here. Gamble. Now it's Granito deflected. It's loose. Granito again. Granito and a whistle for a hand pass. And this has been the best line for the Rams so far. They have sustained pressure consistently, have gotten a lot of shots. They're doing a very good job on the four check, but just can't get a break right now and find one to slip past. <coughs> Excuse me, Rob, slip past Keegan's. And, and for the most part, it's been an evenly played period. If it's not for that freak flip, that freak deflection, and, uh, and Windus losing his stick, this is a 0-0 game. 36 remaining in the first period to the near side in a 2-0 game. Back the other way comes Granito. Granito through the neutral zone. Granito sends it ahead, turned right back around by Jack Stafford. Across the line, Gamble. Gamble left circle, tried to drop to his knees. Down to 22 to go in the period. It'll go behind the net with, with Harrison Chuma. Chuma brings it back, blasts it off the boards. 
down to the near side, Ben Webster. Turned right back around with 11 seconds to go. Out it goes down the left wing, and the icing will get whistled here with seven seconds remaining in the first period. And this is where New Canaan has to be very careful. Richfield with an opportunity here to get another shot on goal, get a deflection as we've seen. This is a big face-off with seven seconds to go. Face-off to the right side of Windus. Ben Welsh on for the draw for Ridgefield against Webster. Off the draw, right down with three, and Windus will cover. <laughs> Waiting on the faceoff is Welsh. Anthony Marciano will join him. Off the face off with two and one and off it goes and Gamble will play it and the first comes to an end with Ridgefield leading New Canaan to nothing. Just a wild first period for this game. I thought we saw a lot of back and forth play. Both teams had, uh, had a couple shifts and minutes combined there where they were on the attack really sustained the pressure. I don't think New Canaan played a poor, uh, that bad of a period that they should be down two right now, but just a couple unlucky breaks. And you do it, you do the math on it. New Canaan had nine shots on goal in that first period. Richfield eleven. Both goalies nine saves apiece and one block for New Canaan. But the difference: Pete Sarath at 106 from Chuma and Conan and Priscilla at 956. Two nothing Ridgefield after one. As we get ready to take a break, we'll come back for first intermission activities and continue on with the FCAC Boys Hockey quarterfinal playdowns. You're watching the FCAC on the HAN Network. Here at the Darien Sports Shop, we are very excited about our newly redesigned men's department. Gentlemen, if you're shopping for work, weekend, or wedding, we've got the latest styles and trends inside our spacious new department just for you. We have vast selections from Peter Millar, Vineyard Vines, Johnny O, Duckhead, Barber, and so much more. And you can even walk out of the store in the new Wolverine 1000 mile men's boot. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and this is your in-game news update, taking a look at the top stories of the week across all of our local news sites. Downed trees, power outages, and blocked roads made big news this week following a Wednesday night windstorm in southwestern Connecticut, unusual for February. Some of the town's hardest hit, like Ridgefield and New Canaan, were still left cleaning up on Friday. In one scary incident in Trumbull on Thursday morning, a school bus got entangled with several live wires on Bassick Road. The wires were on top of the school bus and officials had to wait for UI to arrive on the scene to make sure the power was isolated before the children could be removed. Five students were inside the vehicle when the incident occurred and no one was hurt. And another top story this week, with the growing concern surrounding the heroin epidemic, the Darien Times took a different approach, interviewing a recovering addict. Mark agreed to use an alias to talk to the Darien Times about his real experiences with addiction. Heroin has rapidly gone to the forefront of Connecticut and other New England states as a growing problem. Drug overdose is now the leading cause of injury-related death in the U.S. for adults between the ages of 35 and 54. Overdosing is common among heroin users. According to addiction experts, heroin creates a physical dependence within four to seven days of its first use. Users quickly develop a tolerance. But you can read Mark's story and experiences at DarienTimes.com. Another top story this week was news that students at Fairfield University apparently hosted a ghetto party sometime last weekend, said to have included racist costumes and stereotypes. Fairfield University acknowledged the party in a short press release on Monday where they said that they had learned that over the weekend students who currently live off campus allegedly hosted a culturally insensitive party at one of the residences. University administration is working with students and diversity officers to investigate the incident. According to some reports, students were wearing blackface, though the university has said they couldn't confirm that report based on their investigation. 
And an article that has gone viral on Facebook and the internet about a Detroit woman who allegedly gave birth to 14 children with 14 different men uses a photo that was stolen from the Milford Mirror website. The Milford Mirror is investigating the use of the photo, which was taken at Milford Hospital in January of 2015. The Milford Mirror article and accompanying photo feature an area couple and their newborn baby, which was the first baby born at the local hospital in 2015. The photo has absolutely no connection to any articles about a woman reported to have had 14 children. The family members in the photo published on the Mirror site last year are upset about the sudden and inaccurate notoriety. But you can find out more at MilfordMirror.com. And finally, one of our top stories this week across all our websites is our vote for Week 10's Athlete of the Week. The playoffs have arrived in Fairfield County, and some of the FCAC's top athletes have been showing off their talents on the hardwood, ice, mats, and tracks this past week. You can still vote for your Athlete of the Week through Monday on han.network. But that's all for your in-game news update. For the latest in local news and more, watch Coffee Break weekdays at 11. This update was brought to you by the Darien Sports Shop. Here at the Darien Sports Shop, we are very excited about our newly redesigned men's department. Gentlemen, if you're shopping for work, weekend, or wedding, we've got the latest styles and trends inside our spacious new department just for you. We have vast selections from Peter Millar, Vineyard Vines, Johnny O, Duckhead, Barber, and so much more. And you can even walk out of the store in the new Wolverine 1000 Mile Men's Boot. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. At the Sylvan Learning Center of Darien, experienced teachers and personalized academic support equals superior results. Our certified teachers uncover skill gaps, address specific needs, and help students realize greater academic success and increased confidence. We're enrolling now. Individualized after-school tutoring in reading, math, history, elementary math, algebra, geometry, calculus, high school science, and study skills. For a free consultation, call 203-655-3276 or email gmcsylvan at gmail.com. The HAN Network is the leader in local broadcasting in Fairfield and Westchester counties. We reach tens of thousands of viewers via our live news, sports, and entertainment broadcasting. We can create your advertisement and broadcast it through our programming to one of the most affluent markets in the United States. And remember, our broadcasting is live, which means viewers cannot skip or click past your marketing message. And we measure our audience and their demographics on every broadcast. To advertise on the HAN Network, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. 2-0 after 1, Ridgefield on top. Rob Adams, Chris Callen, Frank Granito. Enjoying the sounds of Huey Lewis and the news inside the Terry Connors rink, Cato. Honestly, after what transpired here at, during the period <laughs> intermission, I may go join Frank on the ice. Come on. Just because A.J. Simonowski and I were reciting the famous scene. Come on. From American Psycho. Uh, yes, word for word. As if you were Christian Bale yourself. <laughs> I'm going to go stand next to Tommy Cribbin uh. in broadcast because I can still hear you. And I got at least three people in front of me that can bite the dust before you guys snap. Across the way stands Frank Granito. And Frank, we're watching another New Canaan Rams team that has to find a way to get some offense. Well, they've struggled a little bit in their own defensive zone right now. They've really got to find a way to be stronger on the boards and not allow Ridgefield to, to keep the puck in the blue line and continue to fire pucks on goal. You're down 2 nothing because of a couple bad breaks. But you skated with the Tigers all period. You had your chances to... Don't start to force things. They'll go your way soon enough. And honestly, it's you're right. It's You had everything working. Two freak accidents. One deflection, and the other one is just you know too much traffic in front of your netminder. He loses the stick, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, you've got a goalie playing with a defenseman's stick. You know, it's not easy to it's not easy to work in net with a stick that small. 
No, and they are lucky breaks, as you would say, but credit the Tigers, too, who have done a tremendous job throughout the period. They put a lot of pressure on. They were strong against the defense behind the net. Their forwards were physical on the forecheck. They got smart shots on goal. They had traffic in front. They made life tough for Vindus. And Keegan's was great in goal that period for the Tigers. Absolutely. I mean, he took a lot of shots, especially in that first minute. But the thing was, they weren't really challenging shots. They weren't, you know, deflections. There wasn't traffic in front of them. They weren't short shots. You know, the, the, the third shot was a short shot in the slot. But most of them all coming from the blue line. No, and there's shots that you want to see from a team early in a period. You're throwing him on goal, testing a goalie out, just to see if he's comfortable right there. And he did a good job. He controlled the rebounds, steered them off towards the corners, kept it away from the slot. The Tigers do have to be conscious of the Rams in front of the net. We talked about how they got it through passes to the front of the net in the high slot there with opportunities. See how coaches made adjustment to that one. And, and you saw, and you can honestly, Frank, I'd ask you coming, you know, standing where you are, coming, you know, seeing the, the Rams coming through. And what was the demeanor for the players coming out on the ice after that first period? Well, I talked with Coach Gore a little bit. He said that, that it was a little frustrating just because they've had trouble this year playing from when they were down. Players' heads aren't being hung just yet. They're going to be okay. They said that all he can practice, they really worked on stretching the ice with stretch passes, trying to utilize the neutral zone. Coach Gore was upset that they didn't see that in the first period. Yeah, no, you're right, and he's absolutely right. They they weren't able to do that. I think Ridgefield, you know, especially with some of the four-check pressure they got at points in that period, New Canyon really wasn't able to clear the puck and then use those stretch passes. And it'll be interesting to see what adjustments they make. But again, it continue to throw pucks on goal against Keegan's. And it'll be very interesting to see how Windus reacts after that first period, where after the first goal, you could tell he was a little shooken and he looked a little nervous the rest of that period. Both teams seven and four coming into this playoff game. And thus they become the four five teams. Ridgefield, 10, eight and two overall, New Canaan, finish the regular season at 10 and 10. Back into the neutral zone it goes, in the Tiger zone, down the near side, 16 seconds gone by, period number two, it's two to nothing. Earlier today, New Canaan could not find the back of the net in the girls' championship game, and the Darien Blue Wave won their fourth straight title, two to nothing. Off to the near side it goes, Will Peters for the Tigers. 36 seconds gone by in the second period in a 2-0 game. Held in at the right point by Jeff Priscilla. Off to the far side it goes. Granito able to clear the zone. Now Brooks Gamble. He gets across the line. Goes down to the hash marks. Drops down below the net. Off to the left corner. To the near side. Penalty coming and there it's whistled. Tripping the call at 57 seconds. It'll be on Ty Fujitani, and it was a really great job by Brooks Gamble using his speed to get in the zone. Didn't have any options in front. He didn't force a pass, continued to skate around the net. Fujitani lost a step on him, tried to go for the poke from behind, and instead ended up catching a skate blade. Face off to the right side of Keegan's. Second power play for the Rams. Pushed across the line into the right wing. Down into the right corner, Gamel. Gamel out of the right corner, takes a look, leaves it at the right point for Francis. Morris set up at the near point. Here's Francis, slap shot coming, blasted wide. Behind the net goes Chuma. Chuma tangled up, now it's McMahon for the Rams. Out of the circle, back behind, setting it up to the near side. Hill sends it well wide. Off to the far side now, it's Francis. Plays it ahead into the right circle. Through traffic, it's loose, climbing on top of it is Keegan's. And we saw really good movement there, Cato, from the Rams on that power play. If McMahon had one more step in him there, Gamble would have found him on the give and go in the slot and they would have had another great opportunity. Yeah, and honestly on that shot too, it was a great opportunity. They did catch, they did catch uh, Keegan's off balance. By the way, I tweeted a picture. Uh, it go, it's going out via my Instagram account personally as the sharp angle comes on. They will be chucking pucks once again for ALS later today, and I've got a puck courtesy of Josh Fisher that I will throw onto the ice. Does it make you nervous that I am also throwing a puck and I'm doing it from the bench? Yes, it does make me nervous. What's your number? 
I don't it doesn't know. matter. Right, my I, money's I, on Frank. All right, you call my bluff. I don't have a puck. Oh, oh it's too bad. My money was on Frank. I didn't feel like calling your bluff. I was just curious. <laughs> I had number 11 over here. I just liked my odds from the bench. Yeah, your, yours was solid. I would have gone for Adam Graves, number 9. <laughs> well, I've got the Messiah, so I'm a happy guy, number 11. The captain, Mark Messier. Hopefully his resume is such that I don't need to explain who he is. Through the neutral zone, McMahon brings it across the line into the left circle. Left circle, George McMahon. Left back at the left point for Morris. A lot of left behinds. Into the left corner it goes. Kept in at the left point. We're left-handed here. Now right point. Francis with the blast. Nothing cooking. Deflected away by Wilkinson. Fed across McMahon on net, and Keegan's will cover it. And the Rams power play is trying to set up the big shot of James Francis to get him a clear lane to the net. That's why we saw Hill playing catch with Morris up on the board so many times, and it opened up the cross-ice pass to Francis. And it was actually an excellent opportunity, but two defensemen just hounding Francis, trying to get in, trying to get on top of him. We don't do skills competitions because we don't have an all-star game or anything like that, but I'd be curious because James Francis seems like he has one of the hardest slap shots in the FCAC. Kept at the right point. Now cross ice to Hayes. Hayes left point through traffic. Trying to deflect it was, with, was, it was McMahon. And all the way down it goes. Could there be a Han Network All-Star game next year? Why not? I would rule nothing out. we got to get it sponsored. <laughs> well said, my friend. Webster and across the line and offside. Yep. Power play expired with nary a... Uh, glimpse of hope here's what I would say nothing game. here's what I would say though four shots on goal for New Canaan in that power play they were able to get pressure they were able to get pucks to the net I thought that was a successful power play for the Ram and a good job by the Tigers allowing all those shots but they're coming from the outside nothing really in the heart of the zone where they would like them to be still two nothing and Dave Stewart lingering and taking pictures that is the scary man right there in your picture although he's really not scary Back out of the zone come the Tigers. Will Peters across the line. I'm now starting to think about the skills competition that an HA and Network All-Star game could have as it's sent down on wind distance the save made. Nice. <laughs> Passes under the RV. Things like that. <laughs> Ooh, that was coming. Down the left side it goes. Into the left corner and behind the net. Whistled around to the near side. Held in right point Jack McGreary. Turned back out of the zone. Mateo Van Wees rather cor correction. Ty Fujitani will play it off to the near side. Down the right side it goes. Fujitani a name well known in uh, FCAC hockey circles. If you have a, a little bit of uh, the gray hair, you might recall Peter Fujitani, the great Greenwich high coach. Coach Greenwich to their last D1 championship all the way back in 1991. Lifted down and back behind the net. Greenwich had a chance at their first D1 championship in over 20 years last March, but it was not the case. Darien beat them 1-0 in the finals with an icing here and 10.47 to go in the second. And you, you see Ridgefield right now. It looks like they're starting to struggle a little bit coming out of this period with the forecheck of uh, New Canaan. Trumbull has knocked off Ridgefield 51-46. So one semifinal on Tuesday night will be Trumbull West Hill. Left circle down to Windus and he covers. Excellent scoring chance for Ridgefield. They get odd, they get an odd number of men. They got they have the numbers in favor right in front of Windus. They get one shot, pad save, right the rebound right to a re Ridgefield player who tries again to put it through. That, by the way, was a double overtime game. Yes, it was. Off the faceoff. Coming back out with the Rams. Down goes Hill. Hill trying to leave it. Hill chipped along and pushed over, over into the near corner. Back out come the Tigers. Kyle Horsett down the right wing. Trying to bounce it through. Lifted right back on net. And it comes over to the near side. I thought I heard a whistle for a moment. I heard incorrectly. Back come the Rams. Down on net. The save made by Keegan's. He reached up and kind of straightened up the body to make the save. And here's the whistle with 10.04 to go in the second period. Still 2-0. There won't be a penalty coming up, but they're going to say that Grisset was in the crease. That's what caused the collision. And so the faceoff will be coming outside after the whistle. A note coming in, by the way, this from last night. 
but the GHS headmaster tweeting that Greenwich won their 45th FCAC boys swim crown. Forgot to note that last evening, so we will do so now. Congratulations to the Cardinals. Down to the right wing it goes, and loose in another try. Good shot from fairly point blank by Gelnaw, and back out it goes. Down into the New Canaan zone. They'll play it to the near side and get it back out. Jack McGreary will spin it back and send it down the right wing with Will Peters. Behind the net, pushed to the far side, got away, and all the way down for an icing. Nine and a half to, to go, second period. And it, you could see a little bit of frustration on the Canyon. They had a good couple opportunities to bypass Richfield and get an odd man rush. They just couldn't clear the puck out quick enough. 9.31 to go, second period. Face off to the right side of Peter Windus. Initially, I thought someone was going to get booted from the draw. It would have been Sarath, but nonetheless, they put the puck down, and we play on. Into the corner with Ferraro. Now McMahon over, sends it ahead, and gets it back out with Hill. But they spin it right back around. Keep it in the Ram zone and out to center. Grabbing it is McGreary. McGreary drops back into new zone zone, plays it back into neutral zone ice. 9.09 remaining second period, 2-0. Game two of three on our Saturday afternoon triple header. There's a blast down back behind the net. Kept alive by Ferraro. Fluttered back to center, and Francis will collect it right there. Francis through the neutral zone. Francis blasts it on net, and the glove save made by Keegan's. And now a little pushing and shoving. Ferraro got knocked down. Pleading his case is Stafford. The official politely telling him to get lost. And Fujitani's going to go back to the box. It'll be roughing. Ferraro came over and he knew what he had drawn. A good job there stopping on the goal. And if you're Fujitani, there's got to be a little more presence of mind with what's going on before throwing him to the ground. 6-14, time of the penalty, and another power play on net, save made Keegan's. Fanning on the second try, they'll bring it back out of the zone with Borsa. Down the left side, it goes to the right side of Windus. So the Rams will start back, trailing 2-0. To the neutral zone, they'll push it down into the right corner, pushing and shoving going on. Ben Welsh getting tangled up with Morris. Hill over at the hash marks. Now they leave it back for Francis. Here's the blast again from him. Deflected, loose, McMahon there. Morris couldn't control it, it'll come out of the zone. So they'll just take a moment and play catch with it. Feed it across to the near side. And McMahon will step across the line. Got away from him, Gamel, left corner. Behind the net, McMahon. In the corner again, sent across, pushed aside by Keegan's. Right point and out of the zone, Morris back to play it. And offside, 7.37, second period. 51 remaining on the power play, still two nothing. And that's a tough offsides call for McCannon. They had an excellent opportunity for a quick break, especially being up a man, and a quick shot to go at the goal, and it's just the offsides. The puck gets in just, I mean, the, the puck handler couldn't get out across the blue line quick enough. Webster back to play it for New Canaan. Comes to the near side. Starts working it up ice from right to left. Leaves it behind for Gelnor. Gelnor steps across. Bouncing to the slot, now left circle. Left circle, Granito. Gunnar Granito takes a look, goes back to the left point for Webster. Webster feeds across to the right side. The blast coming, chipped along, and to the hash marks, Webster on the left circle. He'll go behind the net, setting things up in that right corner. Brings it to the hash marks now on the right circle. He likes to go coast to coast. Off into the corner, Gelnaw. Gelnaw behind the net, getting tangled up back there with Tregurtha to the near side again. Playing it along the boards to the high slot. Back it comes, spinning around as Granito in the left circle. Penalty is expired, even strength, 0 for 3 are the Rams on the power play. Kept in and on net into the glove of Keegan's. 
Two nothing, six and a half to play, second period. And another good power play for the Rams. A good job by the Tigers, though, of keeping them to the outside, not allowing the shots from inside the slot. There was the one opportunity early on. We saw them favoring that shot of Francis, and so Gamble had an opportunity off the, off the boards, and Keegan's with a nice save with the far shoulder. Off the face, off to the near side. Tangled up over there, Marciano. Now loose and fed back to center. Liam Galloway, and across the line, Stafford to the left wing, into the corner. Takes a hit in the corner, now to the right corner, to the near side again, on the right wing, 6-10 to go, second period, and out it goes, and down, icing the call, 6.06 to go, second period. And you watch New Canyon, especially on that power play, they tried a lot, they tried a lot of either, they tried to get a lot of opportunities to get the puck to the center of the ice. And New Canyon just kept, I mean, Richfield just kept on frustrating them, not allowing them to get any kind of clean shot in that crease. 6.06 remaining, second period. Priscilla on for the faceoff. Matched up against Tyler Ferraro and held in at the right point. 2-0 our score, under six to go in the second period. Into the left corner it goes. The left corner once again, sharp angle, comes over to the near side. Turn right back around out of that right circle by Mateo Van Wees. Francis behind the net. Francis will go over into the left corner. Francis playing it over there, tangled up alongside of Priscilla. Puck loose and spun back around. Out it comes. Stepping across the line, Hill. Hill right circle. Hill feeds it across McMahon and the save made. And pushing and shoving, Keegan's holds on. An excellent opportunity by New Canaan. They get the man rush and it's, it's just a situation where you try to go high slot and the goalie's expecting it. And it kind of it kind of looked like Windus was expecting that high slot that high slot shot. Off the face off again, Granito pushed aside, deflected away and out of the zone. Granito whacked at it, spun right back around and Gelnaw plays it off the glass. Back to grab it is McGreary. 5.18 to go second period, two nothing. Ridgefield leads New Canaan in the 4-5 game and it stays that way as Keegan's holds on. Excellent work by Granito on the four check. Be able to get in there, get that puck, goes out and gets himself a good scoring opportunity. Mike Suppy passing along that uh, scoring staying tight in the uh, finals, the wrestling finals. New Milford, Danbury, New Fairfield among the top three with Wyndham in fourth. And another whistle stopping things with 5.06 remaining in the period. What are new Greenwich Cardinals going to hold on to that? Maybe throw it out to center ice. They might just keep it. No, he could try to win a prize. Why not? I would. Off the draw. I know I'm going to miss badly. But we do it because it's fun and it's for charity. Yeah, you're going to hit the sign for hospital for special surgery. Darn right I am. There's no pressure, Rob, but we will have a camera on your puck specifically. <laughs> Out of the zone it goes. Back to play it is Webster in the New Canaan end. 4.45 to go second period. Hopefully Josh Fisher returns in time to do it himself in honor of his dog Ruby. Here's Webster back behind the net. Feet to the far side. And out to center it goes. Four and a half remaining in the period. We're going to have the Huey Lewis cam on that puck. <laughs> out it goes again. Spun right back around by the Rams. They get across the line. Sent down the right wing. Held in at the right point by Granito. Pushed along over there. On the play at Fujitani. Held in Granito right circle. Granito tried, but it got deflected and blocked by the body of Fujitani. And out of the zone. Blocked. An opportunity there for a moment for Priscilla, but he couldn't handle it. Here's McMahon. Tries to dance around the man for the Tigers and the Tigers will bring it back the other way. Send it down the right wing with 3.49 to go in the period. Off to the far side in a two nothing game. Near side it comes, lifted off the glass, played along the near boards, two nothing, Ridgefield on top. Fed across into the left circle. Priscilla for the Tigers. They're in the white with the orange and the black. To the near side again in a two nothing game. It'll go behind the net and into the left corner. Pushed back out of the zone by Granito. 
Granito tries to grab it uh, right along the bench. Pat Gore on as the coach for New Canaan in his second year. Down into the circle and it's sent just wide. Off to the near side now. Out to center, Granito fights through a double team. Here's Gelnaw across the Ridgefield line. Goes down the right wing, into the right corner. Goes behind the net, works it around to the near side. 2.50 to go in the period. Granito there, Francis at the point. Down it goes and the save made off the stick by Keegan's off to the near corner. 2.40 to go in the second period. 2-0 game. Out to neutral zone ice and across the line into the New Canaan zone. Hood back to play it. Teddy Hood, the defenseman for New Canaan. Plays it behind the net to Francis on the near side. Francis had it deflected. Francis will get it back. Turned over and pushed along into the left circle. Hood along with Wilkinson. Wilkinson comes over into the near corner. Held in, left point. Def blocked initially by Gamel. Gamel awaits the puck if they can get it to him. He grabs it at the blue line. Left circle, has a man, goes to the backhand. Slides down, penalty coming, right corner. Another penalty, this will be interference. It was gonna be away from where Gamel had the puck. Gunnar Granito crashing to the net, was taken down. That was by his de uh, the defenseman on him and it was a good job hustling there. A nifty move from Gamel though, as he was just unable to get the shot off. It will be Ben Welsh. Sitting two for interference. And it was a good scoring opportunity. It just looked like Gamble went to the backhand, and that's when he lost the puck. Yeah, it just sort of slid off his stick a little bit there at the end. I think the defender on him might have just gotten a piece of it to interrupt the move just enough. Along the near side boards held in. In the left circle, now on net, and the save made by Keegan's. And you talk about in this period so far, with a minute 51 to go, New Canaan, 13 shots on goal to this period to Ridgefield's four. Uh, the Rams have done a great job controlling the puck. They've gotten pucks on goal. Keegan's has been unbelievable. It's the only reason this is still a two-goal game. Off the faceoff. Out of the zone it goes. And Francis will play it behind the net. 141 remaining in the period, 139 remaining on the man advantage. 2-0 the score. Second period, the winner moves on to the semifinals. Working a man out of his skates is Francis, and Francis gets pummeled across the line by Liam Galloway and another whistle. And Cato, that's a huge break for the Rams that that puck went into the penalty box, and the faceoff will stay down in their, in their zone versus being iced down and time wasting. Absolutely, and it's that, it's that skating and going down and back. But, I mean, Franzen had a great opportunity. If it's not for that defensive hit, I think he scores on this on that drive. Into the right corner with 1.18 remaining on the power play. There is literally about a half second between the game and the penalty. It goes behind the net with 1.09 remaining and out of his own. Morris will have to go collect it. Alec Knapp will try to dog him. Behind the net with one minute to go in the period whistle back to center got away from Gelnaw and cleared all the way down by Chuma out to center Gelnaw waits can't get it Francis now will start forward Francis across the line and an offside whistle and look go ahead oh I was gonna say that might not be a bad offside call there the second unit for the Rams had been out there and they were struggling to really hold on to the puck Coach Gore is now able to bring his first unit back out. He's been, done a good job so far. And it looked like it looked like Franson had a good head of steam going, and it looked like George George McMahon just stepped across the line just ahead of him. And he was just coming off the bench on a change there, so a little miscommunication on it. Francis couldn't control it with 35 to go on both the penalty and the game clock. Second period, two nothing the score. Behind the net with McGreary goes to the far side, hitting, picking up. Down it goes left side. Hayes will grab it. There's the whistle. It's going to be interference. Francis pleading his case. He's not going to get it. Frank, you were right in front of it. What did you Kato, say? I, Kato, I was not a fan of that call. I thought the Richfield player had gone to play the puck. It was a well-timed hit. Uh, I, I was going to say earlier, too, you have to wonder if at any point in time the refs are going to feel as if the Rams are due for a penalty. It's just 
it's a weird way in hockey where you just sort of feel at three to nothing, it, it, the Rams were due. I was wondering that as well, Frank, and it is a weird quirk about hockey. You're right, there's just, like it or not, there's always the makeup call. But I, I don't think there was any need for the makeup no. call because I thought all the calls so far have been good. And I think that's a questionable call, and I don't think that's a you know a call you need you need to make on that. Another type of play. penalty coming here as Marciano pummels his stick into the that's ice, and this comes at zeros. And this is going to be a cross check. So that one will come at the end of the period. You're going to have a minute and 39 seconds of five-on-three hockey now. Yep. Man, for New Canaan coming out and into that third period, down 2 nothing, and now you're at 5-3 for over a minute and a half. For the Rams, it's circle the wagons. Now, you dominated that period, Cato, and those are just... Uh, that last call, you know what, there's no arguing that one. It was an obvious call. Yeah. The one before, we can say it was a toss-up, but you're now in a situation where, okay... Are you going in the locker room complaining over these calls, or do you want to just start saying, we're going to kill these off and let's continue to stay on the attack here? And you know what? And you see Pat Gore standing there, and you can tell there's a level of frustration, and I think it's more on that second hit than it was on the first on the first on the interference penalty. Yeah, it was a questionable hit, and I think the frustration of that first penalty might have led to that. But out of your captain, you'd like to see a little bit more, and it'll be a tough situation now for the Rams heading into the third period. So it'll be 139 of five on three, two nothing after two, with Ridgefield lining up for a, a date in the FCAC semifinals. The officials need to get off the ice, by the way, before they chip, they play chuck a puck. I'm just saying. As the puck begins to fly, are we sticking around to watch me throw mine, Eric Gendron, or you want to break? Oh, Eric's giving me a thumbs up. All right. Well, here goes nothing, gang. Onto the ice it goes. That's not a bad shot, but guess what? Oh! oh we may have a tie. It wasn't bad, but someone else did far better. Oh, no. <laughs> that one got pushed off. Where did that one come from? All right, I didn't embarrass myself. I'm okay with it. All right, the excitement of chuck a -puck has on, come we, to an got, end. We've got one more here. All right, go get him. Oh, that one just missed. Oh, goodness. We got one lady down here. She's got like 12. She's just flinging them onto the ice. Well, we, we had some fun with that. All right, two periods in the books. Ridgefield, two. New Canaan, nothing. Second intermission now underway. Stick around as we come up. Down to Frank, yes? No. Okay, okay. we're good. You scared me there. Two <laughs> nothing after two. We take a break. We're back after this on the HAN Network. All right. There's still a fight out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. If that's the case, keep one thing in mind. It's always summer at the dock shop. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. The dock shop is not your average bait and tackle store. They offer a wide array of products, including apparel, jewelry, home furnishings, and some flat out cool stuff, all with a nautical theme most made in the USA. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year.
year after hip surgery. And playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. My property taxes on my single family home were close to $20,000 a year. Now that I've downsized and I'm in a town home, and because of the condo tax laws, my fees have gone from $20,000 down to about $5,300 with the star exemption. There is no other town home that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. I'm Kate Chaplinsky, and this is your in-game news update, taking a look at the top stories of the week across all of our local news sites. Downed trees, power outages, and blocked roads made big news this week following a Wednesday night windstorm in southwestern Connecticut, unusual for February. Some of the town's hardest hit, like Ridgefield and New Canaan, were still left cleaning up on Friday. In one scary incident in Trumbull on Thursday morning, a school bus got entangled with several live wires on Bassick Road. The wires were on top of the school bus and officials had to wait for UI to arrive on the scene to make sure the power was isolated before the children could be removed. Five students were inside the vehicle when the incident occurred and no one was hurt. And another top story this week, with the growing concern surrounding the heroin epidemic, the Darien Times took a different approach, interviewing a recovering addict. Mark agreed to use an alias to talk to the Darien Times about his real experiences with addiction. Heroin has rapidly gone to the forefront of Connecticut and other New England states as a growing problem. Drug overdose is now the leading cause of injury-related death in the U.S. for adults between the ages of 35 and 54. Overdosing is common among heroin users. According to addiction experts, heroin creates a physical dependence within four to seven days of its first use. Users quickly develop a tolerance. But you can read Mark's story and experiences at DarienTimes.com. Another top story this week was news that students at Fairfield University apparently hosted a ghetto party sometime last weekend, said to have included racist costumes and stereotypes. Fairfield University acknowledged the party in a short press release on Monday, where they said that they had learned that over the weekend, students who currently live off campus allegedly hosted a culturally insensitive party at one of the residences. University administration is working with students and diversity officers to investigate the incident. According to some reports, students were wearing blackface, though the university has said they couldn't confirm that report based on their investigation. And an article that has gone viral on Facebook and the internet about a Detroit woman who allegedly gave birth to 14 children with 14 different men uses a photo that was stolen from the Milford Mirror website. The Milford Mirror is investigating the use of the photo, which was taken at Milford Hospital in January of 2015. The Milford Mirror article and accompanying photo feature an area couple and their newborn baby, which was the first baby born at the local hospital in 2015. The photo has absolutely no connection to any articles about a woman reported to have had 14 children. The family members in the photo published on the Mirror site last year are upset about the sudden and inaccurate notoriety. But you can find out more at MilfordMirror.com. And finally, one of our top stories this week across all our websites is our vote for Week 10's Athlete of the Week. The playoffs have arrived in Fairfield County, and some of the FCAC's top athletes have been showing off their talents on the hardwood, ice, mats, and tracks this past week. You can still vote for your Athlete of the Week through Monday on han.network. But that's all for your in-game news update. For the latest in local news and more, watch Coffee Break weekdays at 11. This update was brought to you by the Darien Sports Shop. Darien Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariensport.com. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. 
advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. It's the the off-the-air music conversations that will always make me smile. Back here at Terry Connors' rink, Rob Adams, Chris Kalen, Frank Renito across the way, A.J. Simonowski talking guitarist with us, and Eric Gendron directing and saying, focus on the game, boys, because I love talking music, but we can do that sometime around 8 o'clock tonight. Game two, second intermission. Actually, Eric didn't say that, but it's still 2 nothing. This should be a nutmeg sports topic. Yeah, <laughs> this year, you know, the, I mean, I, I love arts and leisure. They do a great show. This has got to be a nutmeg sports time. Let's go across the way. Frank Granito is ice side, standing on the New Canaan bench. Guys, I'm with Coach Pat Gore. Coach Gore, you guys dominated that second period. Is there a lot of frustration in the locker room right now, still not having scored? Well, you know, I think we did a bad job in the first period dictating the pace. We did a little better job skating in the second period. I don't think our quality of shots were that great. There's a lot of one and done. We've talked about with this goalie getting shots off the pad and crashing for rebounds. So now it's, uh, there's no other time but now. we got one period to go, two goals to chase, score one before you score two, and just build off it, keep our feet moving, and score the first one. Keegan has been phenomenal in them for goal. How do you guys solve what he's got going on right now? You know, I keep it simple. Traffic in front, uh, quick shots, fight for the rebound, but more importantly, more spacing. You know, if we're just jamming it into him or letting him see the shot, we're not going to be able to score on him. But, you know, it's one of those things that score the first one, and let kind of the faucet drip. Last time we played him, he shut us out. He played extremely well that game. He's played well tonight. We're capable. We just got to get going and and dominate here. Thanks a lot, Coach. We'll Thanks talk to you soon. Friend. Guys, back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Coach Gore. And to uh, Frank Renito as well. 2 nothing after 2. It, it, Rams got to get something going. You know what? And you're right, but I'm sorry. For the first minute and 39 seconds of this period, it's going to be hard to do when you're down two men. Yeah, absolutely true, because you've got Francis off at 1440 for interference, and then Webster off at the gun for a cross check. And and Girl Scout cookies being thrown into the crowd as Cato and I both stop talking and look. That's somebody's <laughs> mom. And mom, mom, grab me a Samoa. Grab me a Samoa. No, they're tossing thin mints. Overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I see Frank's been listening to our conversations. <laughs> oh, man. Jimmy Page overrated. <laughs> uh, 2 nothing after two. Goals by Sarath and Priscilla and Ridgefield right now. New Canaan has not played badly. New Canaan has created opportunities. But again, like in the first game, they can't get the puck in the net. And it's like Coach Gore said, you cannot just fire from the blue line. You can't fire from the top of the circles at a wide open, pretty, you know, at a, at a wide open Keegan's. You need to get in front of him. You need to crash him. You need to go at him. You need the rebounds, the second shots. Pick up the trash. That's what you have to do. And I agree with that, Kato. We saw the two-on-one where Francis had the, or excuse me, McMahon had the opportunity off the path from Hill and put it into the stomach. Those are shots you got to fire low. When the goalie is sliding across, you want to aim for the five hole as he's sliding, or you got to be thinking to get rebounds right now and crash hard to the net. Take one of those garbage goals yourself and find a way back into this game. And you're right. When you see when you see Keegan start to slide, you go for that five hole. Because it's wide open, and that deflection, if you fire it at him in the direction he's going in, it's going to kick back into the net. And the biggest thing right now, you've got to kill off this power play, and it'll be interesting first time we see the Tigers power play tonight, and it comes with the two-man advantage. We'll see how they handle that. And you know what? And if I'm New Canaan, I don't get overly aggressive. I circle the wagons. I protect Peter Windis. You know what? They want to pass the, they want to pass the puck around the outskirts. Let him do it. But keep everything clear in front and don't let them get numbers in front of the net. Now, you've got three on the ice right now. Play the triangle, and then once you're, on, once you're out of that, you've got to be smart about it. Don't force anything just yet. There's a lot of time left. And it only, like Coach Gore said, you got to score one before two. Off and running with the third period, guys. Chuma back into his own zone. Game three, Fairfield and St. Joseph, scheduled for 5 o'clock. Down on net, Winsis makes the stick save to the far side and out of the zone it goes. 
Sean Keegans awaits the puck. By the way, I never heard you say shots in the second period. I did, 13 shots for uh, New Canaan, four for Ridgefield. Really, two period total, 24-13, but the team with 13 in the lead? Yep. Wow, turned right back around and out of the zone with Gamble. Good. Actually, I think you have my numbers reversed. Just looking at saves. Shots on goal for Richfield in the first period was 11. Nine saves apiece for both goalies in the first period. So it was 11-9 in the yes. first period, and I had it opposite. I feel better now. Feel better? You good? I do. Good. So two period total of 15. So 22-15 is shots right now. Thank you. Down to 57 to go on one power play as this goes wide and a half minute remaining on the five on three to the hash marks, goes back behind the net. Off to the right corner, 23 remaining on the five on three. Held in right point, right circle now. Hill lifts it out, it does hit the ceiling. 15 remaining on the five on three. Uh, we've seen a great, great job of the Rams so far in the power play. They've blocked shots, they've been very good, but the thing you have to remember in a five on three opportunity, you cannot afford to ring turn. It has got to be stopped and starts because as you turn, one extra pass, and it's now a two-on-one or two-on-none off in an opposite corner. Absolutely. Off to the far side and out of the zone. Here come the Rams. They send it down with Gelnaw. Eight seconds remaining on the five-on-three. Down to five remaining. The Francis penalty will expire in two and one, and that is over. Now 22 remaining. The Rams trying to stave off this five-on-three. Fed across by Cullinan. Across the line it goes. Francis chips it out. Down to 10 to go on the power play now. It'll bounce back behind the cage with three remaining and out of the zone. And the Rams survive it. Each team scoreless on the power play as this is wristed wide. Comes off to the near side. Hayes waits. Puts it down along the right side. Marciano kept it alive from the high slot. Into the right circle it goes with McGreary. McGreary goes over and grabs it. Webster comes along as well. Held in left point. McGreary takes it away. Comes over near side. Bounces off the boards. Hayes there for the Rams. Pushes it across the line and down into the circle it goes. Behind the net to the far side. With a head of steam grabbed by Francis. He works his way around defenders. Gets twisted right back around. Across the line and falling down goes Chuma, and there is a whistle with 12.17 to go. It's going to be an offsides on, on uh, Ridgefield. That is the call. A note, by the way, Greenwich has won their the Class L gold in uh, gymnastics today. So just saw that come across the line. Congratulations to the Cardinals. Off that face off, it goes down the left wing with Hood. Hood into the left circle. He goes cross ice, far side, trying to play it back out. Fanning on the first try, now turned over and Wilkinson climbs the ladder a little too high. Into the right corner, playing it off the glass and out of the zone. Kept alive by Chuma, now they'll retreat and grab it into their own zone. Push it down into the right corner with Galloway. 11.50 remaining, third period, 2-0 Ridgefield. As they bring it back across the New Canaan line. Down the right side with Kyle Horsa. Getting down into the right corner and a whistle and the net comes off the moorings. Ridgefield for that short burst on the attack. Going at, going right after Peter Wendis, trying to get some kind of, trying to get that third goal to try to give themselves that extra comfort space. 11.41 remaining in a two nothing game. And a lot can be said about, Ridge, about New Canaan in the first minute and a half, did an excellent job killing off that five on three penalty. I mean, a five on three power play. Seeing an interesting note from Scott Erickson and some strong words if I'm reading this correctly. I gotta take a look at it though. Well, we do have a hockey game going on. I understand that. <laughs> I'm also reporting as this hits the netting. You can thank McKinnon. He writes, McCullough ejected from the game and rightly, rightfully so. His antics are costing Trumbull the game. That in the Trumbull basketball game. If Trumbull advances, he will miss the semi too. Again, rightfully so. Kid plays dirty. Those are strong words from Scott Erickson. And you don't hear it out of Scott Erickson very often. No, that's, that's my point. 
Save made off the blocker of Peter Wendis. Goes into the left corner, 11-10 remaining in the third period. 2-0 Ridgefield. So some interesting stuff went down in that Trumbull basketball game with Ridgefield earlier today. Into the left corner it goes, 11 minutes remaining. Lifted back off the glass, and now retrieving is McGreary. And the offside will bring it back. 10.54 to go. And four minutes and six seconds into this period, New Canaan has yet to get a shot on goal. We've seen the pace of play slow down a little bit here. A lot of neutral zone action going back and forth, a couple of turnovers, and the Rams have started to struggle in clearing their zone again. Face off to the dot outside of the Ridgefield zone. Ridgefield in the white with the orange and the black. And New Canaan in those gorgeous looking black sweaters outlined in red and cream. Just stunning with the Rams horns on the front looking like the old Blackhawk style. Of course, the Blackhawk logo with B in that circle on that striping, that field of cream on the front and the name and the number on the back. Really just a nice look. And yes, uh, if they want to make one that says Adams on it, I will take one. There's already one that says Granito on it. There is one. I've got a thumbs up from AJ. I'm sure Cato would take one as well. Oh, absolutely. oh you got to be kidding me. An H oh, a, a thumbs up from Eric as well. This might be, geez, it's close to being the best in the FCAC. i got to be honest. We'll, we'll get them at the All-Star weekend next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's an idea. Yeah. I have to think about where that All-Star weekend would take place. Across the line, Gamble spins around. We have to let them know what our numbers would be. Played back out to center. And here come the Tigers to turn it across the line. Kyle Horsa, left wing. Kyle Horsa gets knocked down. Penalty coming. There's the touch with 9.36 to go. And it's going to be tripping. And it was obvious. It's on the freshman, Shane Pickering. And you saw Pickering not even hesitate, just head straight to the bench. And I think it was just a situation where Pickering tried to poke check the tried to poke check the puck and just got the stick, you know, a little too far too out of his hand and hooked it on the skate of the Richfield Tiger. So Pickering gone for two for a trip at 924. Save made by Windus as it goes to Van Wees in the far corner. They chip at it, they keep it alive. Windis still is in a prone position. Now he comes back up at the other end. Gamel feeds across. Hill couldn't collect it in the slot. They had a shorthanded chance. Hill gets it back, though, left circle. He gets tangled up. Gamel off to the far side goes Sarath. Sarath got the first goal of this game, 1.06 in, and it was 1-0. Here we have nine minutes to go. It's 2-0. They keep it alive. Gamel in the left circle. Gamel will spin around, playing keep away with 117 to go on the man advantage into the left corner, and they'll bring it back out. Sarath has got it, sends it all the way down. Back to play it. Morris will lead it forward and across the line. Will Peters awaits it. It's a 2-0 game with 835 remaining. The winner moves on to the semis. That will be here on Wednesday. We'll be busy again next week. FCAC Boys Basketball Semis on Tuesday. That's at Fairfield Ward. The FCAC Boys Hockey Semis here on Wednesday. Then to Thursday, the FCAC Championship Game in Basketball at Ward. And then to Saturday, the FCAC Boys Hockey Championship. Guess where? Right back here to the hash marks of the right circle with the final 30 remaining on the power play to the near side and 8.04 remaining in the third period of a 2-0 game. 2-0 earlier today as well. Save made by Windus. Comes up into the slot. Turned back and cleared all the way down. Excellent short-handed forechecking by New Canaan on this penalty kill. The Darien Blue Wave won the girls' championship earlier today, 2-0. Both goals by Georgia Cassidy. She was named most valuable player. You could have a little bit of a debate about Giannunzio winning the MVP, but that's all just bookkeeping and other goodies like that. But Giannunzio was very good as well. So the far boards with seven and a half remaining into the right circle. Gamel as well as Cullinan for the Tigers, and the Rams start back out as the power play expires. Ferrara right circle and deflected up into the netting. And an exchange of information out of one circle. Gamel 
and Galloway. No doubt talking about Girl Scout cookies or something. That could be what it is. Which town has the better pizza? And honestly, halfway through this, halfway through this, just about halfway through this period, a little over halfway, that's the first shot on goal for New Canaan. Gelnaw will come down for the faceoff against Ben Welsh. Now he gets booted. Gamble started to come over. He will take the draw. Granito was set to take it as well. Off the faceoff, Hayes keeps it in at the right point. Pushed back by the Tigers. They clear it out. They've got the numbers if they come back in the odd man. But it's pushed off to the near side. Good job defensively by Drew Morris. Seven minutes remaining. Third period, 2-0. Backhanded down the right side. Little exchange of hellos between Galloway and Morris. To the far side, held in left point. Big blast coming, deflected off and blocked into the left corner. Pushed right back out, but nobody home for the Rams, so it'll be taken back. Jimmy Wilkinson starts back from right to left. Goes to the right circle, sent into the right circle, and he scores! And Rob, this is just, and it starts over in the ridge in the New Canaan offensive zone. It's a centering pass that doesn't quite hit the mark. And it, go, it goes right to Jimmy Wilkinson, and Wil Wilkinson pretty much goes coast to coast. Takes it down to that far left side of takes it far to that far left side of Peter Windis, puts it on the top shelf, and just threads the needle right over his shoulder and into the net. And it was the original shot attempt. Wilkerson had the shot blocked by Hayes. That was when Windis went down. He recovered it again and had the upstairs available, and he went right over the short side. Had a great angle from where I'm standing now. A great shot. And it's Wilkinson from Welsh at 8-19. 3-0 with 6.28 to go. And New Canaan now trying to avoid going 0 for everything today. And the save made by Keegan's into the right circle, Ferraro. And the great fun of listening to a team that doesn't have to worry today. They're here to just watch and enjoy and figure out who they might play on Tuesday night. Some of the Greenwich Cardinals just off to our left, and they are loving it. The reactions have been hysterical all day. And this has been a tremendous game. And as I look across the way, you see Greenwich Cardinal head coach Bob Russell right over to the right side of the concession stand, taking it in two, trying to figure out which team he's going to have to face. And I think, he, I think he knows who he's got. Certainly looking like it's going to be the Ridgefield Tigers coming up on Wednesday night. Off to the near side with under six to go and out to center. Gamel gets across the line. Had Granito off to his right. Gelnaw will come down into the left corner. Gelnaw behind the net. Gelnaw right corner. Gelnaw in the circle. Almost an own goal off of Chuma. And goes behind the net to the near side. Five and a half remaining. Gamel setting things up. Granito behind the cage. Off to the far side waiting over there is Stafford. Stafford for Ridgefield. He's tangled up with Drew Morris of New Canaan. Now taken back by the Tigers and threaded out to center. Here comes Cullinan in a one-on-one. -on -one. Makes it a two-on-one. -on -one. Across it goes and Windis with his best save of the day. And that's a great scoring opportunity for Ridgefield. And you see it, you, you, you see it, and it starts with uh, Cullinan. He gets out, he gets the lead. He doesn't over push the pressure to the net. We're gonna have a timeout for New Canaan. He doesn't over push the attack to the net. He waits for somebody to come and help and is an excellent feed right across to the, to the slot to try to put it in. Yeah, beautiful saucer pass right to the front of the net. That would be marinara sauce out of the words of Johnny Bucci Gross. Uh, sounds yummy to me. We'll take a time out here with 5.15 remaining. 3 nothing Ridgefield. You're watching the FCAC on the HAN Network. It's the new year. The to-do list is long and it's easy to feel pulled in many directions at once. Your professional, personal shoppers at Walter Stewart's are ready to check groceries off your list by shopping for you. Save extra time this year and spend it doing more important things. Great food and wine delivered to your home with the same day service. Shop Stewart's online at stewartsmarket.com. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Join us for Coffee Break weekdays at 11 to get the latest Connecticut news, weather, high school sports, and more. News doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break on the HAN Network. Welcome back to Terry Connors' rank in Stanford. Rob Adams, Chris Callen, Frank Granito, 3 nothing Ridgefield. And 
the faceoff will come into the left circle. Anthony Pirelli also here tweeting today, among those tweeting. And we like to say hello to good guys and good people, competitors or otherwise, and Anthony's a good one. But we have Dave Stewart in the house as well. Where is Dave anyway? We lost Dave. Dave probably taking some pictures now. Well, you know that. Well, he was tweeting before, I believe, off to the near side and played with a big hit along the boards. Turned over Hill. Hill had it, tangled up with Welsh. Coming back out are the Rams with Francis. Through the neutral zone he goes. Francis goes off to the left circle. Feeds it across, but it bounces off the boards, and Teddy Hood plays it at the right point. Kept alive over there, now chipped back out to center. And off the, over the line it goes with the net empty and 440 remaining. Spinning back around, here is McMahon. McMahon grabs it, goes across the line. There's the touch, there's the whistle, and 435 to go. Looks like we're going to have offsides. I give Paco a lot of credit. He's taking a big, he's taking a big risk yep. here. But you know what? Let's get the extra attacker on the ice and see what we can make happen. Face off will come out to the dot. Outside the Tiger zone. Bounced off the boards and played ahead by Francis. Goes down and behind the cage. Back to play at Galloway. Galloway in the right corner. 424 remaining, a 3-0 game here at the Terry, Terry Connors rink. Francis will grab it. Turning it over. Granito grabs. Granito sends it down the left side. Got away from Chuma. He will go collect it. Bounces off the boards to the Galloway to the near side. And out of the zone it comes. Francis again throws it back down to the left corner. Tigers grab it with four minutes remaining. A lot of faking and deking. Now ahead it goes and to the far side. Twisting around through the neutral zone. They've got to do something with it. Gamble was there. Gamble gets it across the line. Down it goes with Granito. Granito into the glove of Keegan's. 3.44 to go. Net is empty. And you see Granito with the opportunity. Skates in. You think, you know, he tries to go to the top shelf. You would think in a situation like that, maybe you go a little harder to the net and try to see if you can force it through. Yeah, I, I just, I... I wouldn't say that would have been, you know, it was a great idea to try to beat him on the top side, but you're one-on-one, -on -one, get closer and force something on him. Twisting back down to the near side and put on net, and Sarath has his second of the day, 4-0, and Ridgefield's going to move on. That's the eighth shot on goal of the period for Ridgefield. It's not a goal against the count on Windus because the net was empty, but. Because Cato and Frank and I care about such things, Rangers and Stars, no score. Here, it's 4 nothing. Frank, was there an assist on that goal? Uh, no, that one was unassisted. That's what I thought, okay. Thought I could not hear the public address announcer correctly. 317 remaining. Next game scheduled for five. But of course you gotta have the mandatory eight minute. Sarath on net, covered by Windus. 305 to go. And at home, there's a couple of ladies in my house watching the uh, Rangers and Dallas Stars. It would be three if somebody by the name of Rob Gunkowski played for the Rangers, but. <laughs> so Karen and Chrissy are watching? Oh, God. But Ashley is not? No. Huh. Karen, Chrissy, and, Chrissy and Karen are huge Rangers. Oh, fans. I know they are, but I thought Ashley would be watching also. Here's McMahon down into the right circle. Down into the right corner it goes. No, I mean, I created a monster in Karen. I like it. Webster out to center through the neutral zone, and down into the Tiger end, left aside by Keegan's. Keegan's played great today with 2.40 to go. Near side, into the corner, Hill. Whistled around to the far side and out of the zone. This will go all the way down. Webster will collect it at the hash marks in the right circle. Lost to Skate, had it taken away from him by Wilkinson. Wilkinson in the left circle. 2.23 remaining as they look forward, the Ridgefield Tigers do. 
to a date on Wednesday night, right back here, and we will be here for that. Into the left circle, back behind the net. Oh, almost went over the line, did not. And Windis able to make the save with 2.07 remaining again on net. Windis will cover it up. The Rams will have a week off now, Rob, and pending the Notre Dame of Fairfield, Notre Dame of West Haven game today, they will most likely be playing the Darien Blue Wave in the first round of the state tournament. Mercy. Into the left corner it goes with two minutes remaining. The last time they played Darien and New Canaan was not a bad game. Goes off to the right circle. That was part of that double header weekend, that is, a the back-to-back -back games in the weekend where the girls and boys both played. And both games were not bad at all. Back out through the neutral zone as we come down to the final 100 seconds. Turned right back around by the Tigers. They'll take it back, bounce it off the boards, play it to the near side with Quinn, Hay or beg your pardon, with uh, Jeff Priscilla. Priscilla tries to get it out, and he does. Feeds it ahead across the line. Chuma, correction, that would be 14 Peters, and now into the right circle. Put down on net, and when this holds, with 79 seconds remaining. In this period, it's it's been all Ridgefield. All Ridgefield. Ridgefield's got 12 shots so far in the period to New Canaan's four. Other than that short flurry where New Canaan had it about the five minute mark, where they, between the seven and five minute mark with the pressure. A penalty coming up with 112 remaining. There's the touch. Interference again. Yeah, off the draw, it was one back by the Ridgefield uh, center, and Marciano ran right through him. Looked like he was doing a tackling drill. Marciano has shown he uh, is an emotional player. And Marciano just also got told to go away. And Pat Gore will go have a few words with the young man. It's an emotional game, Cato. Yes, it is. And this was a high-intensity game. And as well as New Canaan played, Richfield was just that much better today. So Marciano off at 13.48. And I have a feeling Hood's going into the bench now. Yeah, or he, into the penalty box, Yeah, rather. he will serve the penalty. Yes. And they assist, they assessed rather a double minor. So probably yes. interference and unsportsmanlike. That's correct, Rob. It's two for interference and two for unsportsmanlike. Yep. 50 remaining. Pat Gore back on the bench. To the near corner. Hey, I'd be the uh, I'd be the last guy in the room to say, you know. Emotional play is not cool because you couldn't find much bigger Paul O'Neill fan than I was to begin with. What? A few water coolers got beaten up by Mr. O'Neill at one time or another. Off to the near side with 23. It's no excuse. I'm not saying it's an excuse. I'm saying you got to collect your emotions. But I, you know, what little sports I played, I played with emotion. Hell, I broadcast with emotion. Yeah, but I mean, those water coolers didn't do anything offensive to him. <laughs> okay, okay. Down it goes to the near side as we come down to five. Off to the near side, played at the point. Tigers are going to play this one out, and they're going to get the win. The Ridgefield Tigers move on to the semifinals on Wednesday night. The final score, Ridgefield four, New Canaan nothing. And an effective performance by the Tigers. Sarath with a couple of goals, Priscilla and Wilkinson as well. And 4 nothing, your final. Doing a quick math here. So Ridgefield now prepared to move on to the semifinals. Got the math done? I've got the math all done here. Okay. What do you got for me? And it's going to be 
Total shots on goals, Buchanan with 25, Ridgefield 27. And the saves. Sean Keegans will finish the game with 25 saves. And Peter Windis will finish with 24. And there you have it. So we look forward to Wednesday night where we'll see the Ridgefield Tigers as we head down to the ice. Let's head down to Frank Renito. Frank. And thanks, Rob. We're joined with goalie Sean Keegan. Sean, you had 24 saves tonight in the shutout win. What was going right for you? Um, I don't know. Everything was going our way. The defense really stayed strong in front of me, so they really helped out. And, uh, you know, I always try to show up, play as best I can, and I guess I did that today. You guys really dominated in the third period, held them to only four shots. What did you say going into that last period with a 2-0 lead? Uh, going into the last period, and especially with a five-on-three, uh, I really wanted the boys to know that uh, it's a really big period, and that's really where the momentum lies in the third period because all year games have been changed through the third period. Uh, for instance, Fairfield Prep last week, we were playing them. We were down three going into the third. We came out strong and tied up the game, and uh, we knew they would do the same thing here, so glad we performed. You guys will match up against the number one seed, the Greenwich Cardinals. How do you feel about that for Wednesday night? Uh, I feel pretty strong about it. When we played them a couple weeks ago, uh, we played we played pretty solid. A couple bounces. Uh, they got they have some really talented players, so um, it's going to be a battle. But I think we can win. Thanks a lot, Sean. Congrats again. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Rob, back up to you. All right, Frank. Thank you very much. As we get ready to say goodbye for game number two, and really, uh, I mean, Ridgefield was solid. Yeah, and they, you know, it's not like they came out flying. They didn't, you know, they didn't beat down New Canaan in any stretch of the imagination. You look at the shots, the shots were pretty much even. New Canaan came out, they dominated in that second period. It looked like they had gained some semblance of control in the game until those two penalties very late. And then you start the third period and you're down, you're down two men with a five on three penalty kill for over a minute and a half and give New Canaan a lot of credit. They played very excellent, they played very well, they killed off those penalties. But then Ridgefield just turned on the pressure and they just kept coming and they kept coming. For the New Canaan Rams, it's been a frustrating day. No matter what gender, game one, they fell to the Darien Blue Wave in the girls' championship 2-0 here in the boys' hockey quarterfinals. They lose to the Ridgefield Tigers 4-0. Pete Sareth at 106 of the first. Chuma and Cullinan, the assists, it was 1-0, 9.56 of the first. Priscilla, unassisted, 2-0. Wilkinson in the third from Welsh made it 3-0. And Sareth at 11.25, unassisted. 4 nothing. the final score. And with that said, for now, that will do it from here at Terry Connors Rink as we get ready for game number three. The St. Joseph Cadets and the Fairfield Mustangs are coming up in just a little while. When you rejoin us, we ask you that you refresh your browser, smartphone, whatever it is you're working on. Just kind of refresh things and rejoin us for game number three. Cato, Frank, and I will be along for the call. And along with our entire crew, we'll be happy to have you for that final game of the day. But for now, the Ridgefield Tigers have advanced to the semifinals of the FCAC tournament, knocking off the New Canaan Rams 4 to nothing. And who will the Greenwich Cardinals play just off to our left? Give them a little shout out. 4 nothing. the final score for our entire crew here. Rocco Veluzzo, Dave Stewart, David Teagarden, Marty Hersom, Josh Fisher, J.B. Cousins, Bill Blocks, Eric Gendron, A.J. Simonowski, Frank Renito, Chris Callen. I'm Rob Adams. Talk to you in a little while for Game 3. 4 nothing. the final. You've been watching the FCAC on the HAN Network.